Hello. My name is Sue Marshall Jennings and I'm leading worship today. With me I have Graham Lockett who is doing the readings and Julia Walsh will be leading us in our prayers. So as we come together to worship, all around us new life is emerging, though we may not yet see it. All around us God makes things new. Let us open our eyes and see. See the new things God is doing. See God at work in and among us. Amen. Let's sing. above and below ground, Lord of the oceans, the ebb and flow of tides, Lord of everything, your glory and majesty is supreme. Lord of all our yesterdays, written in the pages of history, Lord of what is to come, the story that is yet to unfold, Lord of our now, your presence among us. Lord of everything, your glory and majesty is supreme. For being with us at our beginning, for being with us at our journey's end, for being with us today, here and now, we say a heartfelt thank you, Lord. For relationships, for family and friends, for you making your home among us, we say a heartfelt thank you, Lord, for your sharing our tears, for your promises that give us hope. We say a heartfelt thank you, Lord, for the journey we are on today, for your ever-loving presence and the joyful expectation of what is to come. We say a heartfelt thank you, Lord. Lord, you gave us a commandment to love one another. You loved your disciples of old. 
you love us today. You will continue to love into eternity. Help us each day to give life to your words by sharing and showing your love to one another. It's not always easy and often we slip up. Sometimes what we say can be hurtful. Sometimes what we do can cause pain. We are sorry, Lord, for saying or doing what we shouldn't. Forgive us and help us to live out your words in our lives today. Help us to speak and show your love to one another and sow it forward into the future. Jesus knows our flaws, yet loves us unconditionally. Be assured of his forgiveness. He has wiped our slate clean. New beginnings beckon. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading this morning from the New Testament is from the book of Revelation, the Revelation to John. And it's from chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And this is a short passage about the new heaven and the new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Our gospel reading today is from John's gospel, John chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. And this is a passage where G Judas, having received the bread from Jesus, goes out and Jesus turns to his friends and speaks with them. And again, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God had been glorified in him. If God had, has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God.
22 years now since I was first accredited as a local preacher. And so far, I have managed to avoid preaching on the book of Revelation. I guess we all have favourite passages from the Bible um, and ones that we avoid because they're too difficult, too hard, too, too challenging. Well, I decided that it's about time I did have a look at this and see what it's about. I am someone who can walk around the National Gallery in London, ignoring all the masterpieces, just looking for the ladies. That used to really make Larry laugh. I can't do this art thing. I can't do the imagery. I don't know why. I mean, some pictures I love. All those pictures of sheep and pigs and highland cows. Yes, definitely, that's for me. But some of the more intricate pictures and images I struggle with, whether it's whether it's paintings or whether it's descriptions in books and so on. So the different bits of imagery in the Bible I find quite difficult. The bits from John's Gospel I'm not too bad on. I can, I suppose I can recognise some of the imagery there. You know, the vine, the bread of life, the way, the direction. So I can get those kind of things. But then you come to something like Revelation and, and the pictures get a little bit more wacky. Is that a word you could use about the Bible? I don't know. When you've got seven horns, seven eyes, angels in four corners. It's kind of hard for me to get my head around, even though the numbers I know have special significance. But one of the things that I was really opened up to when I did a Bible engagement course a few years back is that whilst the Bible, yes, is in many ways a collection of different books, yes, a collection of different reflections on what's been witnessed, um, a collection of different explanations. But really, all these are part of the one story, the story of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is there in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, you know, he is the beginning. He's there in the now, the present, and in the future. And that's what Revelation affirms. If we look at the first verses, Graham's read from chapter 21, but if we read from chapter 1, it starts off with, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him, John, so that he might show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who, in telling all that he saw, has borne witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that's where the whole thing links together for me. Yes, I mean, there's some fantastic imagery there, but what the essence of the story is that Jesus is the beginning for us, the middle, the present, the now, and there is a sense of future there as well. So in this vision, John sees all things being renewed. The world of the creation story and the present day is replaced by a new world, heaven on earth. God lives among and will be all things to his people. And the story is one of great excitement and hope, knowing the past and living the present 
gives great hope to John's view of the future. If we ask ourselves, are you the same person now that you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Some of us could go back much further. We change. We do change. Now, whether it's something we believe in, something we do, um, something that we've learnt. Life does change, and we change as people. Or do we? Is there still something of that essence of us that was then, is now, and still will be for whatever is to come? So there's a sense in which we bring the future into the present by changing, doing something different. Once again, I think we need to put this into context and it, it helps to understand the passage that we've heard. The visions of devastation within chapters six to 20, they're framed by visions of God as creator and redeemer in the early chapters and again in the one where we've started our reading today, 21 to 22. And the destruction arises with the ongoing fulfillment of promise of God as Emmanuel, God with us, where us isn't just Israel, as we tend to think, you know, but it's it's us now, it's that present. Parts of the Old Testament refer to Israel because by definition that was the, what was around at the time. And the redemption and renewal of all creation follows preparation of all people as brides. That's the, the imagery that's there. Adorned for the delight of God. It's a heavenly city where worship is eternally accepted. And it's now where we try to bring that city into the present into our present. And that, in a sense, ties in with the fulfilment of the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The eternal God, the beginning and the end of all things. The word that brought everything into being now speaks, completing the creative work by making all things new. The whole thing links together and this is tying it all in towards the end. Even death is overcome. In the place of death, destruction, greedy and violent society and world healing suffering is swept away healing water of life flows from the throne of God do you ever watch that program the repair shop on TV People are fascinated to see old and battered objects, usually well past their best, become transformed by the skill and the loving care of those restorers, those craftspeople who work on them. And they always try and preserve as much of the original 
as they can. It's not a case of stripping something right back down and replacing it with something new. The whole purpose is to keep it as it was. Even if something is just so far gone, you think it's just not going to happen. But then we do. We see a remarkable transformation. Teddies restored. Gadgets that, toys that oh, were loved 50 years ago. Artifacts handed down from grandparents. Gorgeous suitcases and document cases restored. It's absolutely amazing. But it's not just the objects themselves that are restored. There's pretty much always a real emotional connection in the backstory. The memories associated with those objects. And the transformation in the object gives new life to these stories. You hear people saying, oh, you know, that was my, granddad made that for me umpteen years ago and now I can hand it on to my grandchildren. It's something that, it's a continuation of the family. It's a continuation of the connection. And this is something like the revelation the vision there, especially the part, you know, we, we've heard today, John sees all things being renewed. The world, the past and the present are replaced by a new world in which heaven comes to earth. God lives among his people. God will be present and provide all things to his people and knowing the past and the present and the future gives great hope to John it's not just about the future is it it's the same God who was who is and who will be our lives matter in the here and now and our work and our worship, at least in part, is about us seeking to bring that future into the present. Our task becomes one where we follow Jesus to the holy city. But also, that's something for the future maybe, but to rebuild that city where we are now, making the kingdom come everywhere and for all. So this very much links in with our uh, gospel reading as well. The common denominator is love. Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. I think one of the things that stands out for me is he does it in silence. You know, it's not like a, a jolly, oh, let's all do this kind of thing. There's a solemnity to it um, and a deepness and a, a commitment and an emotion. You can't do that kind of thing if you don't care if you don't love. We know that there are many different words for love, many different kinds of love. But what Jesus does for his friends, his disciples, in that act is about love. And that ties in with what we are called to do. As disciples, as followers, as believers, we too are called to love. Love our neighbour as ourselves. 
love the stranger, love everybody equally, no judgment, no discrimination. That's the only way we are going to bring that kingdom into being. Thy kingdom come. And I wonder what we need to change, whether we need to change us, whether we need to do change what we do as a, a church, as an institution, as a body of people, what we do in our communities. Maybe that's the time to have a good look at ourselves and think, can we do this? Are we doing it? Is it something for the future? Do we plan it? Do we put it off? Do we procrastinate? It's my middle name, actually. Procrastinate. But seriously, this is a time where if we really look to that revelation, that vision of what creation, the world, life in general should be, that glorious vision and revelation of John, then it's up to us, isn't it? It's us to us to make it happen, make it change, transform something, transform something that's been there for a very long time, maybe getting more and more ragged, like the stuff that comes into the repair shop. Do you know what? I said I was going to challenge myself and preach on revelation. We're all challenged, aren't we? And I think we challenge ourselves even more when we look at something like that and think, it's not up to somebody else. It's not something that we can put off to the future. It's something that we should be dealing with right now. Amen.
bring before God our prayers for our broken world, let us pray. We pray, dear God, for places where there is division and for countries in the grip of civil war. May your Holy Spirit bring peace. And we think especially at this time of the ongoing situation between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for countries where there is religious persecution. May your Holy Spirit bring unity. We think especially at this time of the many countries where people are not free to worship as they wish. We pray for towns and cities where gang warfare brings fear. May your Holy Spirit bring hope. We think especially of the tourists kidnapped from their bus by the Mawozo gang in Haiti. We pray for communities where there is inequality. May your Holy Spirit bring dignity. We think especially of the Sri Lanka, where the dire financial situation is causing food and fuel shortages for many poorer people. We pray for workplaces where there is insecurity. May your Holy Spirit bring confidence. We think especially at this time of those miners still trapped after three weeks in the zinc mine in Burkina Faso and also with those dealing with the gas tanker blast at the Saratoga Hotel in Havana, where mainly construction workers and employees were killed and injured. We play, pray for places and homes where there is brokenness. May your Holy Spirit bring healing. We think especially at this time of Shanghai, where the government total lockdown for COVID is in its seventh week. We pray for churches where there is dilemma. May your Holy Spirit bring life. And we think especially of the Methodist Church here in Bulgaria, as they undergo this separation from the United Methodist Church and become members of the global Methodist Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will say together the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Lord of all, grant us the grace to love one another. Without the hindrance of walls or division or any other human construct. Help us to understand what the oneness of the body of Christ can be in a practical way in this earthly life. Help us to be the testimony to the world you would have us be. Amen. <laughs>